Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug, if you're just tuning in for the first time. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I've done a long running series of episodes on my channel called Reggae Spotlight. Uh, today's video is going to kind of uh, relaunch, reboot, if you will, that series. I've tended to focus on a single artist in those videos, which is numbering over 25 now. I'm still gonna do those from time to time, but there's a lot of other topics I also want to get to that will hopefully enable me to um, to show more of my collection and put it in a better context for you guys, uh, which uh, just I'll just show you very briefly. The top two shelves, basically, or one and three quarters of the top two rows there, all reggae vinyl, plus many CDs, many vinyl singles, still just a drop in the bucket. Huge amount of music came out of that little island in the Caribbean, very big subject. Uh, I am by no means an expert, but uh, I've been in it long enough. I've got enough uh, listening, listening in that I can kind of uh, give a, a general outline. I know the basics. There's plenty of people out there that have deeper collections that uh, have more in-depth knowledge, but uh, I, know, I know the basics is what I'm trying to say. So what I'm gonna do is give a very brief, very general overview of Jamaican music and uh, a lot of subjects that I've uh, touched on maybe here and there in different videos. I'm just gonna kind of run through it very quickly, very basically, quick and dirty, and then hopefully this will open up to uh, more topics I can tackle down the road and get into more detail. And a lot of topics I wanna get to. Jamaican music. Uh, Jamaica the island is situated in the Caribbean, uh, right kind of at the crossroads of a lot of influences uh, in the early uh, colonial period. The Spanish and then later the British, their ships would bring slaves from Africa, stop in Jamaica on their way to other islands in the Caribbean, on the way to South America, on the way to North America. Large portion of the population of Jamaica is descended from these slaves who uh, brought along vestiges or remnants of their culture, uh, particularly their music in the drumming rhythms. Uh, some of the spiritual traditions lingered on uh, and was later um, and was carried on through the generations. In the 1800s, there was a big uh, religious revival in Jamaica. There were various movements that sprung up out of that, uh, some of which had music traditions that went along with them. Some of these traditions uh, were put out on a compilation from Heartbeat Records in the 1980s called From Congo to Zion, Black Music Traditions of Jamaica, Heartbeat Label out of the U.S. And this runs through some uh, music associated with religious movements, including Kumina, uh, Revival, which is a Christian-based. I think Kumina is a blend of uh, African spirit-based spirit uh, uh, philosophy and Christian imagery, and then the Rastafarian tradition, which uh, arose in the 20th century. There's also some other movements like Jonkanu, which is uh, African blend of Africanism with uh, religious Christian symbology, as referenced in this dub album from the 1970s, Jonkanu Dub by the Revolutionaries with the kind of African masks and costumes that John Canoe dancers in Jamaica would perform. John Canoe dub. Uh, the earliest kind of folk music in Jamaica, or the first one to be recorded in the modern age at least, was called Mento, which is a version of the Trinidadian Calypso. In Jamaica it's called Mento. Uh, lyrics often uh, humorous, uh, sometimes uh, risque in nature, uh, sometimes political, sometimes... Um, news of the day kind of lyrics. It's uh, not much out there for Mento, but there's this nice compilation from Pressure Sounds called Take Me to Jamaica, mainly from uh, 78 RPM discs, which was the format of choice of Mento. Jazz was also popular in Jamaica in the early part of the 1900s. Uh, influence from the European colonial powers in uh, some classical music military marching band type music, all these different influences would come together in Jamaica. Also uh, influence of Latin rhythms from other islands in the Caribbean. And all these rhythm, these uh, influences are traceable in uh, Jamaican music as it entered the modern age. By the early 1950s, Jamaica's first recording studios opened up. 
Um, in the 1940s, they had had a lot of big bands, jazz type swing bands performing around the island. Gradually, this shifted to the what became known as the sound systems, which was initially just a record player with an extendable speaker. And these were popular with liquor stores. They could play music and uh, put the speaker out on the street and it would draw customers into the store. Through the 1950s, these sound systems got bigger and bigger until over the decades they became massive rigs of uh, speakers pumping out massive watts of power and uh, with they would be um, holding dances at halls or open air lawns and uh, the sound systems would uh, would become almost a, like a secret history of Jamaican music, often driving a lot of the need for the innovations that would come later. It would be a testing ground for music as music be more and more music began being produced on the island. That would be a crucial uh, testing point. They would test records. They would make the rounds on the sound system, sometimes uh, months later appearing in a commercial form on record. Initially, what was popular with the sound systems was uh, US R&B. Uh, the island was tuned into some of the radio stations from the southern U.S., which was apparently receivable, particularly from uh, New Orleans. They were right into that R&B style with uh, the jump blues, swing bands, that Fats Domino kind of uh, boogie R&B. Uh, they would make the sound system operators would make trips to the island to uh, or to America to buy records, bring them back to Jamaica to play. The race was on. It was highly competitive between these different sound systems. Uh, who The early ones had uh, colorful names like Tom the Great Sebastian, uh, Nick the Champ, and uh, names like that. Uh, eventually, they began, uh, the man who would play the records on these systems, who was called the Master of Ceremonies, or MC, would, uh, apparently the first one to do this was called Count Machuki. He began talking over the records that he was playing, adding jive talk that he'd picked up from U.S. Uh, soul R&B DJ, radio DJs. Bit of jive talk, catch, throwing in catchphrases. This would later down the road become known as DJing. And uh, when transplanted to the U.S., would uh, the sound system culture and the, uh, the art of uh, emceeing or DJing over records would become known as rap. Uh, as Jamaican music went on, the supply of R&B records from America began to dry up. Um, the, uh, the rhythms of rock and roll took over on America, so the Jamaicans had to start recording their own music to, uh, to replace that supply. Eventually, uh, initially, following that U.S. R&B shuffle boogie kind of, kind of template, but by the early 60s, a new rhythm took over. Uh, informed by jazz, informed a bit by Latin rhythms, various other influences came together to form uh, this heavy brass, driving brass-driven rhythm called ska. It's a great compilation called Intensified that appeared in the late 1970s, early 1980s on Island Records. Original ska with uh, some nice tracks here from Roland Alfonso, Baba Brooks, Don Drummond, the great trombonist, the Scatolites, many of these, uh, these horn players and musicians came together in a coalition called the Scatolites. Ska was a first full-blown, fully original uh, Jamaican musical form, which uh, was poised to, to uh, make a move internationally. It was represented in New York at the World's Fair. The Scatolites themselves were only together for a short time before splitting up. The trombonist Don Drummond, who had been plagued by uh, mental health issues, stabbed his girlfriend, the dancer Margarita, fatally. He would spend the rest of his life incarcerated in uh, Jamaica's Bellevue Mental Hospital, passed away in 1969. This precipitated the breakup of the Scatolites into various coalitions of uh, session players. That's a crucial difference in Jamaican music. From, uh, from other parts of the world. Uh, the musicians are kind of loose aggregations of players who back up the, the artists performing. They're not uh, divided, not typically divided into self-contained bands that are the actual artist, but they actually, uh, they work for producers. Jamaican music is also much more producer oriented. It's the producers who are um, not necessarily um, producing the actual music, Typically, they would leave that to, um, to a musical arranger or to the musicians themselves, but they would finance the sessions, get all the people together, and then uh, put the records out and reap the rewards. 
So Jamaican music, hugely producer driven, hugely driven by sound systems, need for exclusivity, exclusive tunes to play, the competition between the different sounds, this dog eat dog environment where everybody's trying to uh, get ahead, innovate, develop uh, new sounds that the people will respond to. This would drive much of Jamaican music. By the mid-1960s, the rhythms of ska had slowed down. Uh, as the legend goes, the summer of 1966 was an unusually hot one. It was too hot to dance to those driving, brass-driven ska rhythms. So uh, the beat slowed down into what was called rock steady, uh, where the bass and the drum moved more to the forefront. Those uh, driving brass sections with those great players of the ska era, more of a background role. And the... Uh, the proliferation of harmony groups on the island with <laughs> seemingly a dime a dozen of these fantastic vocal groups, many of them inspired by U.S. soul, particularly the three-man format of Curtis, Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions. Also, the social conscience, socially conscious U.S. soul lyrics would make a, a huge uh, impact on Jamaican music. The rock steady era would only last for a couple of years until about 1968, put out a enormous amount of classic music that would have an impact on Jamaican music through the years. It's an early compilation that was put out, Rock Steady Intensified, Jamaica's New Dance Craze. Shows you how old that record is. The very young Lee Perry there. And great hits by groups like the Tenors, David Isaacs, the Visions, the Gay Lads, Clancy Eccles. Nice comp on world records there. Ska and Rocksteady tend to be better, best found on compilations. There are so many different producers that it's, uh, it's kind of hard, and so many different records coming out. Loudest island in the, in the world, Jamaica's been called, pumping out an enormous amount of records per year. Very difficult to do one complete overview of uh, any of these movements, even though they only lasted a few short years at a time. The UK began developing into a huge market for... Um, for Jamaican music as the expatriate Jamaican population moved there looking in search of a better life. As the beat changed once again around 1968 into what was called reggae, sped up a little bit. Um, the first tune to actually reference this new style was a tune called Do the Reggae by the Maytals, aka Toots and the Maytals. Some debate about what the actual first song with the new beat was. Some say it was Larry and Alvin's Nanny Goat. Uh, many of these early reggae singles would be released in compilations, a series of compilations called Tighten Up in the UK on Trojan Records. This is the first volume. Various Artists Compilation. It's on the classic orange and white UK Trojan label. And hits from people like uh, David Isaacs again, Joy Landis, Derek Morgan, very big star, the Kingstonians, the Uniques, one of those great vocal groups of the Rocksteady era. As the series went on, the covers would get risque. There's volume two. This whole series of those. Those are the only ones I have. Um, Rocksteady moved into reggae by the early 1970s. The music was going through various phases. Many developments happening around this time. DJing became more prominent with uh, Uroy taking the form into the, uh, into the charts becoming the first DJ to make a huge impact on record rather than strictly in the uh, live sound system format. Uh, the first experiments in dub began, which would have a huge impact on, uh, on uh, dubstep, grime, all forms of kind of uh, dance music internationally later on down the line. Uh, the music itself would go through various shifts with uh, quirky sort of organ-driven instrumentals becoming a hit, especially in the UK, where they were popular with working class youths called skinheads. By the early 1970s, a movie called The Harder They Come came out, which made a star out of uh, its lead actor, Jimmy Cliff, who'd already been recording since the very early days of Ska. The Harder They Come soundtrack, released in the early 1970s prominently featuring Jimmy Cliff's music as well, and somewhat telling, telling a somewhat fictionalized version of a true story of the Jamaican outlaw, Rijin, who in the 1940s went on a crime spree, also kind of encapsulating the Jamaican music scene at the time, made a huge impact internationally, introduced reggae to a larger international audience. 
It's an alternative version of it I have. Found it in a thrift store, kind of a white island label. Found this for 25 or 50 cents. Not quite exactly sure what pressing it is. Uh, following the harder they come, reggae is getting bigger and bigger. Island Records promotes Bob Marley as its first international star. His albums will go on to uh, really put reggae on the map. By this point, the music is taking on a new rebellious phase. Rebel Music was briefly called in the early 70s. It's another tr compilation from Trojan Records put out in the 1970s, kind of retelling the history of Jamaica. This was compiled by UK reggae authority Dave Hendley, passed away a few years ago. Many years after that, he put out a second volume in the 2000s, Rebel Music Volume 2. Another film came out in the 1970s as uh, it en the music entered what was called, called the Roots era as themes of Rastafari, repatriation to Africa got stronger. Another film encapsulating that era came out, Rockers. It showed a new generation of reggae artists, many playing themselves, superstars like uh, Gregory Isaacs and many others. Dennis, this is the era of Dennis Brown, uh, all all bringing reggae to a larger international audience. Following the passing away of Bob Marley in the early 1980s, there's the Rockers DVD, great film. Following the passing away of Bob Marley in the early 1980s, the music entered a more insular phase, less concerned with um, crossing over to a larger audience, um, more youth-oriented, more concerned about today, not as uh, focused on uh, themes of uh, black consciousness, repatriation to Africa, but more focused on uh, the pleasures of here and now, being alive. This was called Dance Hall, although strictly speaking, all Jamaican music is Dance Hall, meant to be heard uh, in a night out with a beverage of choice in hand. The, uh, the concept of listening to this music 40 years down the road in your, your music room would have been very foreign to many of these people. This is music meant to be enjoyed in the here and now. Greensleeves label released many of these um, classic dance hall records of that early 80s period. In the 2000s, they put this compilation out. Biggest dance hall anthems, 1978 to 82, showing that era. Great compilation there. In the 1980s, the dance hall scene would undergo many shifts, uh, incorporating more digital or computerized elements from the mid 80s on. In the 1990s, uh, there was more shifts as more roots and culture themes came back to the forefront and kind of on and on the music has gone since. For uh, anybody new to Jamaican music, there's no compilation that tells the whole story better than, uh, to my mind, better than Tougher Than Tough, the story of Jamaican music. This came out in 1993 from Island Records. Four CDs going chronologically through the different phases of Jamaican music. If you're new, you can kind of figure out uh, what uh, what era you like the most. It was disc three for me initially, although all of them have their uh, their charms, their attractions. This was originally supposed to be. Uh, this was compiled by Steve Barrow. Uh, it was originally supposed to. He told me originally supposed to be 20 or 30 CDs long until the accountants at Island Records got uh, got wind of the idea and uh, put the kibosh on that pretty quick but crucial as it comes. Uh, there was also a accompanying series of books called The Rough Guide to Reggae, also by Steve Barrow with Peter Dalton. They went uh, to three editions of that. Again, running through the entire story of Jamaican music from the very earliest days, Mento to Ska, right up to uh, the time of publication in the 1990s. Uh, just gives you a great overview of everything, how it developed, all the different phases, major players, and uh, they also put out Reggae, the 100 Essential CDs. So that is my introductory video to Jamaican music. I hope to tackle many more of these topics in more detail down the line. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.